Welcome to the Chicago International Organ Academy. I'm Philip Kleckner, the founder and artistic director, and this is Tabitha Moldenhauer, our program director, and we are here to talk to you today about the Toccata, the fifth movement of Vidor's fifth symphony for the organ. Uh, with these videos, we're hoping to encourage you to uh, find that all organ repertoire is really accessible. That doesn't mean that it's easy. Uh, that doesn't mean that you'll learn it in two weeks. But when you have good manual technique, pedal technique, a good practice plan, and an understanding of the music that you would like to learn, everything does become accessible. And if you've already played this piece for many years, hopefully you'll find something new in what we say uh, to kind of refresh the piece for you, give you a different perspective so that your next performance of it will be even more successful than previous ones have been. Great. So, we all know, as I said, that this is the fifth movement of a larger work, and that to understand the Toccata, it's important to understand it in its context uh, of the multi-movement uh, symphony uh, for the organ. And uh, what f precedes this particular movement is an adagio, a very, very slow adagio. Uh, you've just played this recently. I did. So tell us about that. Um, it's a really beautiful piece. It's very legato. Uh, the, the melody is, is in the pedal um, some of the time. And it, it's, it's just totally a different character from the Toccata. And I think listening to the entire symphony as a whole will really help you before you try to learn the Toccata by itself. We hear the Toccata excerpted a lot, um, postlude for Easter Sunday, wedding recessional, but to understand it, you really have to hear it in context. Uh, and if you are able to have that understanding of a slow, sustained legato, um, lush strings um, registration, uh, the impulse to take the Toccata maybe faster than it should go uh, would be less of a, an urge. And that's an issue because uh, there have been so many editions of the Toccata that have the articulation written differently. So we should probably tell people what edition are we using? Uh, 20 years ago, John Neer published a brand new edition, uh, meticulously researched, uh, with uh, AR editions, and uh, that's the edition that I have become familiar and fond of, uh, particularly in how he has prepared this uh, movement, the, the Toccata from the Fifth Symphony, uh, and how he has carefully notated all of the articulations, the slurs and the staccatos that were uh, implied and suggested uh, in the very, very final uh, edition, the very, very final version that uh, Vidor published. What about the tempo? Because you hear this in a big range of from super, super fast to much more manageable tempo. Um, and I think, especially what you said, going from the fourth movement to the fifth movement, the real difference is the articulation, not necessarily the speed. Yeah, uh, one of the points that John Neer makes in this edition uh, is that Vitor was after uh, clarity and um, transparency. And uh, all of these uh, staccatos, all of these slurs are really, really, really difficult, if not impossible, to play clearly, to play effectively, if you're going too fast. Uh, and so the idea is not to make it easy on the organist. The idea is not to take it at a tempo that uh, is manageable necessarily, but to take it at a tempo where the articulations that are given, the accents that are marked in the music, uh, are uh, able to be uh, clear, transparent, and um, easily uh, projected. And for the staccatos, too, we're talking half value. Right, so every 16th note that is staccato is a 32nd note. Right, uh, Vidor's tradition, uh, which he uh, inherited from Lemons, was uh, that all of these uh, staccato notes were to be played uh, half value. Uh, Dupre brought that into its uh, fullest uh, expression uh, a generation later, 
Uh, but if we're looking at playing it at whatever speed we end up with, whatever tempo we end up with, uh, those 16th notes actually have to be 30 second note durations. And I have um, some videos linked uh, in the description. So Vitor himself, we know, was not very happy when organists took this way too fast. There's a recording that he did, and granted he was over 80, but still, he does not play it that fast. There's also um, a recording from, I believe it's 1959, of Pierre Cochereau, who is taking it even slower than Vidor did in his recording. Yeah, and these are really, really eye-opening, ear-opening uh, renditions, and they do um, contrast greatly uh, with what we're used to hearing um, later in the 20th century, early in the 21st century, people have really, really taken this piece on as a virtuoso piece, and it is a, certainly a piece of uh, uh, requiring a lot of stamina, um, but it's not, a, uh, it's not meant to be a blur. And uh, we are offering these links of the Vidor performance, the Koshiro uh, performance, um, as uh, food for thought. We recommend them highly. And um, that is where our thinking is uh, these days. We've slowed down uh, <coughs> at least to the metronome marking that's uh, written in Vidor's last edition, uh, quarter note equals 100, and suggesting something um, uh, several, several ticks um, below that so that the clarity that we've been talking about can be achieved. So how would you start? If you had never played this piece before, how would you start? I would start unbelievably slowly um, and just get used to the mesmerizing uh, aspect of this um, melodic line. Taking it so slowly that you can comfortably feel the um, half value of those um, staccato notes. And only when the right hand is comfortable with that and you can control all of those um, attacks and releases on the staccato notes, slurring the notes with good finger independence, should you even begin to put the left hand uh, with it. Uh, but the left hand should be practiced by itself as well. <laughs> And so forth. And once those elements are uh, comfortable by themselves, then you can put it all together. But again, uh, for lack of a better word, excruciatingly slowly at the very, very beginning. very strange measure, which is measure eight. It is the second half of measure eight right before the pedal comes in, which is where there is an absolutely impossible um, span with left hand. You can do it, I can't. Most people probably can't. Uh, you have a tenth. You're supposed to reach a tenth with your left hand. With two more notes in between. With, with <laughs> many more notes in between, right. It's not really possible. So you have to do some, some judicious sharing, and you are still playing all of those 16th notes with their correct articulation in your right hand. Plus, you're going to pick up a note with your thumb in your right hand that is written actually for the left hand. Right. So on the um, third quarter beat of this measure, uh, you should take the uh, E natural that is written in the left hand should be taken with the right hand, with the thumb of the right hand. And uh, we're going to show you. Uh, and the fingering we're showing is very, very important to be able to make that work. Yeah, there are not a lot of different ways that you can finger this passage and uh, do what we're suggesting as far as uh, uh, sharing the notes between the left hand. Uh, and the right hand. And that doesn't make it easy, but it does make it possible. And for many of us, it would not be possible otherwise. You can use either five or four here, depending upon your reach. If you use four, you can prepare your fifth finger over the coming F in the next measure. If your hand is stretched too far, then just use five. and move quickly to the next F. One more time.
if you have any questions about this piece or if you have other pieces that you would like us to talk about please put those in the comments below thank you for watching i hope that you've uh, been able to unlock some of the mysteries of the uh, famous toccata and i encourage everybody to uh, work on the piece slowly carefully and to encourage you to make this part of your repertoire I know that for some of us, it seems like uh, it is out of reach, but it really isn't. If you practice slowly, uh, are careful about what's written on the page, and uh, use some of these uh, suggestions that we've uh, made today to um, make your way through the piece as you're learning it uh, from the beginning or polishing it up after having let it um, lie for a longer period of time. Thanks for joining us.